Alrighty, so it's time for another episode of the podcast. Today we're at Republic Coffee, which should get them to give us a deal on this since we're always here. But uh, today my guest is... Sharice Norman. How's it going, Sharice? Good, it's going great. Awesome. Let yeah. me scoot this just a little closer. Okay. No, it might fall, so if it bangs, it will. Uh. <laughs> so Sharice, you are an actor of both stage screen. Have you directed some too? Um, I AD to pl- uh, play before. Assistant awesome. directed before. It's not my favorite thing to do. <laughs> it's, it's, I've done it too. It's, it's a lot of work. It is a lot of work. I Once I did it, I was like, I don't know how you directors do it. You have all these people. I have to think about everything, what they do. And I'm like, then you got to calm them down. And you got the diva actors and you're like, calm down. It's okay. Just do this. And yep. Then I had it with children too, so oh, I was right. assisting yeah. directing with kids with them, and I was just like, <sighs> I mean, it's hard enough to work with adult actors, especially you know plays too. I'm, I'm fine even... with the kids though. Really? Like I find the kids are more. It's like when adults act like children. It's like whoa, <laughs> <laughs> you're older than me, and you're just sixty year old person, and I can't really just like no, you're doing it wrong. <laughs> you're doing it wrong. Do it again. But a child, I could be like. Look, you're doing it wrong. Do it again, okay? And they're like, yes, ma'am. And I'm like, good. Adult, they're like, I think that was the right decision. I'm like, look. Uh, they want to argue. I'm like, look, I know what she wants. Okay, yep. she told me what she wants. <laughs> but that's not what she wants. And I'm like, get back out here and direct your people. Okay, I can't. I yeah. can't. Adults are hard. I don't know how you do it. Um, luckily, I work with pretty good, pretty easy going people. Mm, Especially when you do movies, though, you kind of get to to kind of cherry pick people a little better than yeah. the play and you don't have to spend as much time around people and <laughs> it's it's easier I, th- I think I don't know mm. what uh so how did you get started with uh, first of all so what, what what all have you done acting wise you've done a lot of plays um well my first play was in high school I was in 11th grade and we did the wishing tree and I'm never gonna forget that play because it was my first play and I stole the part <laughs> because it was a part meant for a boy, the lead, and it was part for a guy named Randy. But it was very ambiguous. So I was like, can it be a girl named Brandy? Oh, there you go. And she was like, You can audition fine, sure. And I auditioned and I stole the part for my friend who was a guy and I was like, Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I was in the all star cast because I got to do all four shows instead of oh, just wow. one. And I was like, Yeah. And then after that, I went to UT Knox to act, and I did some plays there. I did like before I hit home, and I was I had a little minor part. And then I came to University of Memphis and started doing plays. Uh, my first big play was with Nadia Matthews. Um, it was Bittersweet Sixteen. We did it at the Rose College, and it cool. had this huge set. And I was playing a sixteen-year-old girl who was adopted, and was a foster child who got adopted by her dad but she didn't know it was her dad her dad didn't know it was her dad it was the stepmom who knew all of this and the stepmom <laughs> had got me gang raped and oh, i was wow. pregnant and she was making me hide it so when a baby come out the stepmom pretend like it's her baby <laughs> <laughs> a lot of drama That's it was so far drama, yeah. and then <laughs> mtv sweet 16 party i had over there and everything it was just a crazy show but a happy ending everything turned out good, good. but and then um it was actually kind of the first time I really kind of did a little filming because we did a, a, a trailer for it and we did it like it was a short film trailer, like it was for a movie. Oh, awesome. And we did it at the hotel. It wasn't a Peabody. It was downtown. It was this old hotel downtown. Mm-hmm. And we did it there. I remember it was really old, but it was beautiful on the inside, but it wasn't a Peabody. It was some other hotel. And we had this hotel room and then I was laying on the floor. I like baby i'm crying to my grandmother and i'm like yay this is so much fun i got to act like i'm shooting up coke (laughs) so i had to roll up a dollar (laughs) what do they do what do they use like baking soda they use baby powder baby powder yeah wow they use baby powder powder and it was in black and white so you couldn't tell the texture of it but you just saw me push it Oh, and yeah, yeah. make it look like I'm snow some over. Really, I'm just pushing it away. So, uh, like, I'm actually doing something, but movie I wasn't. Movie magic. Yeah. <laughs> A lot of movie magic. <laughs> and then I just, and then I just lay my head back. That's crazy. So, how did you get into film then? You've uh, also done a lot of 
You've done some shorts and some uh, features too, right? I did my how I got in was actually after that play. I met this guy named DNA Steve. <laughs> he's a guy. He's on K ninety seven. He does the fraternity test oh, okay, yeah. on Tuesdays, and he saw he was actually MC for a bit of sixteen, and he was like, "Do you know about indie films?" And I was like, "No, what's that?" And he took me to the indie film festival that year, and that was two thousand ten, I think, okay. the one in October. And I actually had to meet the guy. Dang it, what's his name? He did Footloose and oh yeah, Craig Brewer. Craig Brewer, yeah. yeah he yeah. he showed us his first film at the film festival. Before the Hunger, yeah. Yeah, and it was so good. And I got I met him, met the lead actress, and they signed my poster. And then he, I started networking with different people there, and that's when I found out about Forrest Pruitt's um, acting company. Mm -hmm. He has an acting um, yeah, he does class. Classes and yeah, stuff, and yeah. I found out about that. And that's where I met. I went to his class, and I met Lazarus. Mm -hmm. um, he's a film director, and I actually did his uh, trailer for Happy Hour. Oh, okay. And he was trying to make it to a film, but he hasn't yet. But he did a trailer for it, and I had a nice little part where I talked to my boyfriend, and I think I got shot. <laughs> I don't know if I got shot, but I know he. The guy was in there about to shoot somebody. You know, I think he left it up in there and didn't ever tell me if I ever actually got shot. But you see him spin around and you hear a shoot, but you don't know who he shoots. Oh, okay. And I'm like, was it me? I don't know. <laughs> but that's how I got into it. I met Lazarus. And Marcus Kent, or Kent. Marcus Kent? Kent, yeah. Yeah, Marcus Kent mm -hmm. was the filmographer for that. Mm -hmm. And through him, I met... It's all through people. Oh, yeah. That's, that's through him, works. I met this other director. I can't remember his name. Because I did Slaughterhouse Five. Mm -hmm. And I was a party girl, and my friend gets raped, and I tell her boyfriend, and he goes slaughtering <laughs> through the house party. And I'm at this house party, girls kissing girls, and I'm just getting drunk with her. And then while I get drunk with her, she gets raped. Oh, and wow. I go tell him on a swing. I'm on this swing <laughs> in the park. And it's a, this girl took a great picture of me. I, that was a good headshot. But I'm in this park and I'm swinging and I tell him, like, yeah, she was right. And he was like, who did it? And I told him who it was. And he walks away and then he comes back and slaughter everybody. I never got to see it because every time we had a film party, I had a play. So <laughs> I still have yet to see that film, but he's shown it twice. I know he entered into films. And so, yeah, basically, word of meeting people got yeah. me in, like, one person got me to meet one person, and then I moved on to more people, and and then Facebook. That's how I met Sam. Yeah, I met him through Facebook, but actually through um, uh, my my play mother, my manager was the one who recommended me. Like she tagged me in his Facebook post. Oh, okay, and then I was like, oh, okay. And then I went and did Shelby Stacks, and then that's where I met you. Yep. And so... It's just kind of, yeah. Yeah. It's all networking. Yeah, it's basically how I did everything. And then um, when I did my Nike commercial, I found that throughout, through friends. They were like, you know, it was a Nike commercial. And I was like, really? That's okay. Cool. And I went, and I went with one of my friends, and me and her were just acting like ourselves and being silly. And then they were like, we're going to make you principals. Because we were just being <laughs> us and yeah. just being goofy. And they were like, yeah, we're definitely going to make you principals. And so I got in that. And then when I get did that, um, Drika, this, uh, this lady who works at Channel Five, she mm -hmm. does commercial. She saw that, and so I did a short. I auditioned for her short film, but we haven't finished it yet. We haven't started on it, but I did a commercial for her. Oh wow! And when I did that, I met this man on Facebook, A.D. Smith, and I did a short film from him called Mama Spirit or something like that, and. I didn't have to talk. I just had to pantomime and mm. be a mother, and I I die, and I save my daughter with. Oh, it's called the last drop. I saved my daughter with the last drop of <laughs> magic I had in my thing, and then I did a short. Then after I did that, he made me be scandal, like a scandal commercial for his play. Oh wow! So I was Olivia Pope, and then <laughs> after that, he was like, "Be in my play." So it's like a recycle of people yeah. constantly moving me around and. Doing little projects for our friends, like my friend Hendra Rummis, he has his own little production company. He does short films, and I did one with him called The Last Affair, mm -hmm. where I was just in my underwear and <laughs> trying to get my boyfriend to love me, and then he kills me 
He just freaks and str- well, my my I'm a mistress basically, <laughs> and he strangles me because I want him to love me. He's like, "You're not right for me," and I'm like, "Oh my goodness!" And that film, if you ever see it, God, Lord, at the end, just look at my throat. <laughs> We never did a retake, and so when he's choking me, he lets my throat go. Yeah, I like swallow. You can see oh. my throat go up. <laughs> and I'm like, I hope dead people do that. Like that last sure bit of splits. There's some spit. muscles that still move around or yeah, something. I guess. But I see it just moves because so, I'm trying to hold it, and he's like, oh, and, it, and I'm just like. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, look at that. You see my throat move. <laughs> I was like, God, why didn't we do, redo that part? But well, we didn't. So. I mean, so, how many, you're in a play right now, too, right? Mm-hmm. I'm in uh, Midsummer Night's Dream. It's with the Ten- <gasps> Tennessee Shakespeare Company. We um, partner, they partner with University of Memphis, where I went to school at. Mm-hmm. And so they let me audition. Awesome. And um, it's a professional, only professional theater company, classical theater company here in the Mid-South. And yeah, this is the last week of it. We have two weeks of it so far, and this is the third week. And this is my second time doing Shakespeare oh, wow. with them. <laughs> how do you how do you do it? Like, oh, gosh, Shakespeare is hard. It's really hard. Oh, Jesus. I, mean, I, I did Romeo and Juliet Project with them first, and I was Lady Capulet. And mm-hmm. it was really cool how we did it, because... We went to schools and high schools and freshmen, and we'll teach them. We don't like to say teach. We'll, we'll play with them, Romeo and Juliet. Like we'll bring them up in oh, the class, cool. give them noodles, pool noodles, and we're like, "This is your sword." Awesome. And then we're like, "Okay, you're this character," and then we'll re- we'll speak the line to them. Like, um, um, I see you bite your thumb at me. Now you say it. I see you bite my, your thumb at me, and then we'll make them do it back and forth, and they'll put on their own kind of production in the classroom. And then on the on the fourth time we come back to see them, they already been through the play, but we don't tell them the whole part; like they have to read it. Mm-hmm. And so the parts we didn't let them read and stuff, we come back on the fourth day and do the entire play, so they can see it and hear it. And so they're not so they're more aware and can understand the language because they've yeah. been speaking it for three sessions with us so they had a chance to have a feel of it know what stuff mean ask us questions like if you don't understand something what 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 don't you understand right and so when we perform it they can actually follow the play with us that's really cool and we didn't do it in like big costume like all we had on was hoodies right like i had a blue hoodie to show my montague because montagues are blue like we were gang members and yeah. then capulets were green and and then when I was a woman, I just took my hoodie off and just put on a, and had a skirt just fall out. And I'm like, this is like the simplest wardrobe. We had no set. Oh, yeah. We just played it on their stage or we were playing on their cafeteria floor or we were playing on their gym floor. And to do all of that, that was the best way to teach me Shakespeare because I had to learn my part. And then I also had to learn all my other friends characters part mm. because when we go in the classroom it only be two of us oh, wow. and we have to say the lines from like we'll have a module of what lines we're supposed to say and we're supposed to learn both lines Oof. so we can speak it to them right and so i knew majority of the play <laughs> i learned most of everybody's lines of the play and i was like god how hard is it to to do that to learn all that stuff and does it i mean does it because when i watch it sometimes it takes me a little while to get into that that mm-hmm. language and really figure out exactly what the hell they're saying and what it means. Yes, and... it's at times. I mean, it, at times I do get my director like the face, like I just spoke something I didn't get, it. Mm-hmm. and then she's like, "Why didn't you look it up?" And I'm like, "Ah, oh, because when when you're playing a character, it's your responsibility to look up what you're saying." And they had like Shakespeare dictionaries for yeah. what stuff means, and so I'm like, "Okay," and and. They say it's kind of easy because it's in a rhythmic tone, like bump, 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 like the heartbeat. Oh, okay. So you are naturally getting to the pattern. Like when you pick up the language, you can start following it if you follow the rhythm because it gets in a rhythm tone. And so it kind of just sticks with you eventually. The hard part is, is knowing what you're saying. Right. Like you can remember the lines, but it's easier if you memorize the lines and know what you're saying right and sometimes what really helped me was when we rehearse it i got to see it too and so when they're talking and they're moving and i'm moving she's like well why don't what do you think this mean and i'm like i thought it mean this she said 
say it again and move this way. And then when I said it again and I moved a certain way, I was like, oh, that's, oh, cool. that's what that means. I said, that's funny. I didn't know that. I said, oh, okay. <laughs> that's really cool then. Because I was like the slowest one there. I was like, yeah. And there I was like, well, I did this in Shakespeare, this in Shakespeare. I'm like, this is the first. <laughs> yeah, so you've done two Shakespeare plays now? This is my second one. Wow. Midsummer, and I did them back to back. I did Romeo and Juliet January through March, and then I'm doing this. I started rehearsal for this one May to now. Oh, wow. And so I was like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is fun. It's very much fun. So what's the difference between doing plays, acting in plays, and, and film? Um, Theater and film. Um, Theater, you can't make no mistakes on stage if you do you gotta keep going like they both have their difficulties because on film it's like even if you make a mistake you can start over but if you do a full run and then you do it again your your goal is to do it the exact same way right so when they edit they can have options to pull from and it won't be different mm -hmm. And it's so hard sometimes, like, when you memorize lines, sometimes when you memorize, you mess up a word. Like, you keep, sometimes you put the word in, sometimes you take the word out. And that's one of my biggest fears. I'm like, oh, God, <laughs> did I say it all the way through? I don't think I did. Mm, I think I added a word. And I'm like, what word did I add? Oh, well, keep going. And I'm like, oh, he's going to have fun editing this scene. I'm, and with stage, it's like, you got to do it over and over again every night. Mm -hmm. And if you mess up, you just got to keep going. Yeah. And it's like, there's no retakes. You just got to, you got people out there watching. Like, I fell oh, last no. Thursday. Um, we had a change of choreography, and this guy didn't, it was my fault. I should have spoken to them and told them that my director told me to change something. Uh -huh. And nobody ever told them that we changed something. And so he didn't know I was behind him. Oh, no. And so when he jumped, he jumped and ran right into me and pushed me down. And I'm on the ground. And I'm like, shh, just keep going. <laughs> okay, go. Okay, okay, turn. Okay, now. And then he, like, I had to stay on stage the entire time. And I, like, twisted my ankle. And I had to just keep going, keep going. And when I got off stage, I was like, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. And then when she shows up, I was like, ow, my ankle hurts so bad. And I was like, why did you tell me? I was like, it just, I just wanted to get through the play. I just, you got to get through. It's like nothing you can do. Like, I, I can't go home and oh, do yeah. nothing about it. I got to keep going. Like, if I was getting hurt on film, and it's like, oh, well, we'll just, We'll try it tomorrow. We'll do it tomorrow or something right. like that. But it's like... The show must go on. The show must go on. And But with film too, though, it's like, if we're on a time frame, we're on a budget, and we're like, well, this is it. And we're like, okay, I, I can do it. I can do it. I can do it. But you have the advantage of not looking at... Shoot, we just won't shoot your leg. Exactly. Wrap your leg up. <laughs> we just won't shoot your feet. We're going to shoot ankle up or something. So it's just... They're both difficult, but they're definitely different in their own world. Like, one is live and one is um i don't know the word one is consistent yeah like you have to do it con this way consistent you have to c like if you were to make me cry on film over and over again i'll probably hate you and i'm like <laughs> but i gotta do it <laughs> every time every time just that way go okay so cut do it again okay do it from a different angle okay now we're gonna try this angle and i'm like <laughs> Does it ever get just tedious and does it ever get just monotonous doing, having to do the same thing over and over again? It gets, it gets not tedious with me. It gets harder because I'm trying to be honest with my feelings and relay the same emotion on each scene. Like if I just start <laughs> acting, you can definitely tell. Yeah. If you're trying to get it from a different angle, it needs to be the same emotion coming out. And that's probably the hardest thing is sometimes you get that good shot and it's like wow okay we put it over here okay reset we're gonna go over here and i'm like i gotta do it again <laughs> god okay i hope this actor gives me the same emotion he gave me right before so we can do this the same way and that's a learning process for me to give you the same 110 percent each shot so it's not looking like right fake yeah. I'm not trying to give you no dramatic acting. What, oh, that is a huge difference, too. Going from stage, 
very loud to film. Very, bring it down, Sharice. Break it down. It's a lot bigger in, in, on stage. Yes, than you have to and, be. and it's so hard when I first transitioned from film, I mean, from stage to film, because I was such a stage actor, such a loud actor, um, and they were constantly telling me to bring it down. And, like, the toughest one was that Nike commercial. They kept telling me, bring it down, but be high. And I'm like, right. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? You want me to have high, but keep it down yeah and i'm like high energy but keep it down okay <laughs> okay and they just kept getting on me and my friend bring because she's a stage actor too and right. they were like bring it down but keep the energy and we're like but we heard that's good though it's like it, i heard it's good to have an actor who comes from stage sometimes because it's it's easier to bring a person down than it is to build a person up oh, sure yeah so i was like okay so that was one of my things um working on and toning down the facial expression because stage is so big yeah and you gotta you gotta reach the audience in a very back row and you gotta be very expressive with your face and film is very film gets everything yeah it gets it's like a magnified glass. it picks up everything and i'm like because you can yeah depending on what lens you use and all that i mean it yeah you zoom right into the face and it's easy any little muscle movement. Yes. And, yeah. and it's like, don't be too expressive. And I'm like, but be expressive. And I'm like, God, I'm, it's, it's a learning process. It's, I'm still learning in both areas, but most, definitely film. I'm learning still. And that's why I like to do all these projects in Memphis. So I take everything I do as a learning pre- process. So like when you direct me a certain way, it's different from how somebody else direct me in film. And it's like, okay, so this is another way to do it. Okay, got you. And... Yeah, it's, what, it's definitely fun. What kind of characters do you have? Do you have a certain type of character you like to do or play? Or I want to play all. That's my go. I like to take men characters mostly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like I tell everybody, like, who's your favorite actor? I'm like, I have none. I have competition. That's that's. Ah. I call all my all the great actors on film. I'm like, God, they were so good. I want to. I want their role, but. Um, Sometimes I get typecast as the drug addict because I'm very skinny. And so people will be like, okay, you're skinny. Give, give her some pills. Give, give, her some, give her some cocaine or something. I'm like, okay, whatever. And, which was very hard because I don't do drugs. So I was like, I, get, I drink. I can play a drunk if you need me to. But they, I heard, like, I kept having to reset. I was like, drunk, being drunk and being high is two different things. And I had to find that out. I was like... <sighs> so How do you research something like that? I have friends who get high all the time. And I, and I actually tell them, I actually, one of my friends got high once. And I was like, can I just watch you get high? And they were like, really? You're going to buy me something? And I was like, no, I'm not going to buy you anything, but you're going to do it anyway. What day are you going to get high? And they told me. And I was like, okay, I'm going to just watch you. I'm going to watch you get high. <laughs> I'm going to go to a party and watch some people just get high. I was like, I'm going to watch you. I just, and then I, of course, movies and stuff like that. But right. that's dramatized too. Right. Except for some that actually did it in the movie. And then you're like, that's a little method acting, but I'm not into that. And then um, I play bougie characters sometimes, a stuck-up housewife or a stuck-up proper girl, mean girls, which I like. I like to be mean to people because I'm normally not mean to people. So it's like, yeah, do I what I say. When I first met you was on the, the first Shelby Stacks mm-hmm. short. And it's funny because, I mean, most of us had worked together before. And then... And I had read the script, so I knew what you know what your character was supposed to be. And you came in, hey, how are you? How are you? Sat down, <laughs> studied your lines, and very quiet and nice. And, and we were like, oh, okay. And I was like, all right. And then that first scene when you like fling the door open and <laughs> curse them out, and like, you know what? I remember all of us were just kind of like, wow, that's that's pretty amazing. <laughs> flip switch. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> How do you, as an actor, how do you do that? I well, mean, flip the switch on Yeah, people. how do you flip a switch? I just, I mean, I always take, when I read a character, I always, I, lo- I have to love the character. Like, I have to, like, love the character. And I'm like, oh, my God, when I got that script, I was like, yeah, <laughs> this is it, yeah. And then, like, I watched some Pear Grimm movies. I was trying to talk 70s. I was like, yeah, that's how they talk. This is their lingo. And I just... I play with the character. I mean, it's not me anymore. And I, mm-hmm. I, I definitely try to make it not me. And 
I guess I just have fun with it. So it's like once I once you say action or once you say go, it's like I'll be me off stage or just hanging out, being me. And then once you say go, I'm like, okay, posture change. This is how they'll walk. This is how they'll talk. Okay, this is their body movement. They wouldn't touch their hair. That's a, that's a meism. Right. They wouldn't do that. They would do this. They would move their hips like this. They would go like this. It, at first, it's a technical thing. I'm like, okay, how would they move? And then it becomes a, an emotional thing. Okay, how, how are they feeling today? Okay. And then it goes a, an acting thing. I'm like, what is all the actor giving me? Like, are they giving me this stuff? And how would my person react to that? So if they're, like, firing me, she she's going to get mad. And right. based off the line, she's getting mad. So it's like, switch on. Okay, I'm no longer this. And then sometimes it's hard to turn it off. Because <laughs> after you guys saw me after that that day, I was still a little sassy with you guys. And I was just like, yeah, I don't care. Mm. And then I'll laugh. I'm like, I'm sorry. I'm just playing. I promise I'm just playing. I'm just still in the mode. I'm, I'm just in the... I'm in my Shelby mode. Or I'm in my Zuri mode. It just whatever character I be, I'm kind of in that mode for a little bit. Yeah. That day until I leave the scene and or my boyfriend hates it sometimes because I'll I'll be in a mode or something and then I'll come to him and then I'll be like <laughs> my bad. And he has no idea who who's no, he, dating. He, that, that yeah, moment. he's like, what is going on with you? Come back, streets. I'm like, okay, I'm sorry. That's I'm funny. here. I'm here now. Are there any kind of roles that you turn down? Do you ever get a script and just say, nah, that's not good? Um, no, not yet. I'm pretty sure I'm going to get to the point where I might turn down some stuff. But right now, I'm just exploring stuff. I mean, if it's, like, full nudity, then I'm like, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. You can't get, no. Nope. Sorry. Mm, not in my contract. It ain't going to work. You see my way my mama works? <laughs> she ain't going to watch it. <laughs> you can't get me, man. Like, even just, I was like, no. It just, it, it's not going to work. Like, right. It was like, mm-mm can't do it but but if it's like something that's like off the wall something i just don't know how to do i'll take it because i'm like it's a challenge and i'm definitely trying to get outside my box and be a real first actress like i want to be like johnny depp and play all these different types of characters in any way possible and I mean, sometimes people be like, you just can't play that. And I'm like, well, I can try. You know, I can definitely try. And if it's not working, then it's the director job to tell me, you just going to let you go. And I'm like, okay, I tried. <laughs> but I tried, though. You're like, we, we tried to work this out. But I definitely had roles that I just didn't get. And it pissed me off, like, for plays. Because I tried to get it every night. And it was just like... I got half the role because it was two different people. Like she had, it was two people and yeah. I was playing two people at once. But the other half, I was like, I don't get it. Like I just, I don't get it. And it pissed me off that I just could never get into that role. And I was like, oh my God, I hate that role. <laughs> I like the other half of it. Like I love that role, but I hate, hate this role. Like yeah, that role just sucked. I was like, I can't. How do you deal with that as an actor? Is there any, are there any tricks? Do you? Do you just have to fake it to get through it? or? or? That's the thing I hate to do. I don't like to fake it. Right. But it was like, I felt fake. Like, if I feel like I'm acting hard as heck right now, and there's nothing you don't want to feel. You don't want to feel like, oh, I'm acting. I'm acting. You want to feel like I'm having fun. Like, when I go into a role, if I'm really into it, I'll come out of it and be like, what did I do? And then you'd be like, you did this. I'm like, okay. Did I do that right? Like, if I ever asked you, did I do that right? Just because I just went into it and I was enjoying it and I was just have I was in the moment and not thinking about it. I was just doing. But if I if I'm thinking about everything I'm doing, every single step I'm doing, and I'm like, God, I'm acting right now, and right. I can tell I'm acting right now, and I know I don't know if anybody can tell, but I can tell, and I, it makes me so mad, and it just really pisses me off because <laughs> I'm constantly researching this role I'm constantly trying to get into this role this character's head and I'm like so confused about what this character want I'm asking the director what does this character want and if it's not the director of play and, and they don't know what they want like I don't know like my one of my directors didn't know because he didn't like the play and he's like I don't really did it because he didn't like it <laughs> and he was like I hate this fucking play and then his, his advisor was like well you should do it because it's hard yeah. and he was like yeah I'm gonna do it and every day we were discovering stuff with that play, and I was just like, 
we are like some of us like oh, I love this character and it's like me I was like I had two characters and they were one and I was like well I like this part of her when we do this scene because it's a, I can do this I didn't want to sneak up on you oh no you're fine <laughs> so you're, you're talking usually when I walk over here you're like blah, blah, blah. <laughs> <laughs> I had a woman, woman screams so loud I had guests in the patio come in going <laughs> like looking and I was like Jesus woman just <laughs> like you know how Wayne's brother screams uh huh like that ooh it lasted like 8 seconds that's that's insane that is crazy <laughs> what she's been through in her life but it was something girl I'm not gonna get you anyway just dropping it off thank you <laughs> thank you but um yeah just it's hard I mean, I can just try to research it. I can try to get into the character's mind. And I can ask people, like, their point of view. But at the end of the day, I have to get it into me. I have to put in more work with it. And if I get lazy with it, then it can just go pew. Yeah, you can tell sometimes when people aren't aren't connecting to it, I think. Mm -hmm. Um, You can even tell, I think, when a director is not connecting with the material. Because the whole film, it just doesn't have a life to it. Yeah. Or even a play. Like, I've, I've seen some plays where I, I thought the whole cast was on and everything was going well, and then I've worked on other plays where you can just tell that, it, you know, yeah, it's hard to get into it if the director's not into it or if even your leads or anybody else. Yeah. If everybody's just not into it. Um, so what kind of, what, what's your goal? I mean, is, is acting your goal? or? Yeah, that's just basically what I want to do. I have always said this is what I want to do in my life. I mm-hmm. said if I did anything else, the acting is going to be the front of it. Like, that's it. So, right now I'm just learning a lot here. And then I might relocate soon or whatever. Mm-hmm. But I really didn't want to relocate. But Memphis has a lot of rules. Like, sucky rules with the commission office here. And then not a lot of films can get in here. Not right. a lot of good pay for stage here. And I'm like... Yeah. I yeah. Yeah, it's it's one of those frustrating things too where there's I feel like if if we just had tax breaks and yes. something going on here, mm-hmm. we're just about ready to really burst and become a really good film community and play community and all of that, but it's just there's too many little things kind of holding back. Yeah, it's a lot of things holding Memphis back from because it was like so many opportunities, so many films and shows that were trying to come here but passed up here and went somewhere else yeah because of that stupid tax and i'm like oh um, louisiana and atlanta oh they huge, they yeah. take all of our all good of films yep i was so mad when blindside was made in, in atlanta and i was like yep it's about a memphis guy <laughs> and memphis beat was shot in new, new orleans. orleans i was like that's their Bourbon Street. That's not Bill Street. You know, I was like, even though it's a small version of Bill Street, I mean, Bill Street is a small version of Bourbon Street. But I was like, where's BB King? Yep. You know, where's that at? And I was just like, I, you know, I wonder too if people across the country realize that, or if it's just because we're from, you know, we live here. And I don't know though. I mean, I just they probably don't even notice it because Bourbon Street and Bill Street kind of do look alike. A little bit. It's yeah. Just they. They don't have a certain source that we have that on Bill Street that makes it unique. Right. And, I mean, Atlanta has these areas where it can look kind of like a certain area of Memphis and stuff like that. It's just a southern, it's the urban areas they're mm-hmm. going to. And it's like, you can always remake it somewhere else. But we we really know it because it's like we're actors here and we're like, these these are our shows these are our jobs that could be going to us and to the city of memphis and yeah like we can bring in a great revenue and stuff i mean we're already a tourist site anyway why can't we have exactly more things to bring here because footloose was going to be shot here craig brewer was in the when i met him he was talking about how he wants he wanted to shoot footloose here right and he had to go somewhere else because they wouldn't yeah, Lord attacks and cheaper to make it somewhere else. Yeah, and I was just like, okay, that's sad. What have you got going on the rest of the year then? Because your play wraps up. Yeah, um, I'm gonna be in the Women's Theater Festival, and we're gonna do uh, "Making Me Happy." I think that's what it's called, "Making Me Happy." It's about um, it's set in like Mississippi time, but we moved to Memphis, and I'm a young girl, and this is like after slavery, and I'm. Me and my sisters are moving into this brothel, but we don't, I don't know it's a brothel. I'm the youngest. I don't know it's a brothel. I just thought it's such a nice house where these girls just wear nice underwear and they always <laughs> sleepy. And our mom sent us there to get a job, but not in a brothel, just to 
get a job and find a husband. Right. And it's just a nice little comedy. It's really a short little comedy. And it's very funny. It's about making people happy. <laughs> and it's a play on the word, making me happy. And it's very funny. It's a very funny play. And um, I just finished filming Crest Life, which is a short film here in Memphis uh, with A.D. Payne. And I was a news reporter for that, so I awesome. just finished that up. And I'm doing a short film in September. I can't remember. I'm horrible with names. I'll remember his name when I meet him again. But I'm supposed to be doing a short film, and I'm supposed to play a daughter. I'm just doing, like, pantomiming, mm -hmm. talking to my father, but you don't see what I'm saying, and nothing like that. And um, I might be understanding for this play. I don't know yet. I might be doing a monologue slam. Mm. I don't know yet. I'm waiting on confirmations for either one. Because if I do one or the other, I can't do the other one. Right. So, and um, I just finished this play called Uncle Curly's Family Dinner. And we're supposed to be doing another one in November. I think after Thanksgiving, that weekend after Thanksgiving. And... Yeah. <laughs> you got a full calendar. Yeah. And then I might do some more stuff with the Tennis Shakespeare Company. Only thing with that is is Tennis Shakespeare Company takes up a lot of your time. I'm sure, yeah. And because it's they it's an equity company, so they hire equity actors and so they take up a lot of your time. <laughs> and I like to do other things too at the same time. But right. they pay you though. So I'm like, ah. I know. It's hard to turn down a paying gig. Yeah. So I might do some more of that. And Sam said we might do another Chevy Stacks. So I might do that. I think he said around Halloween, maybe. I don't know. You never know with Sam. <laughs> that's true. And yeah, that's about it for right now. That's awesome. Well, if people want to find out, keep up with what you're going to be in and what you're doing, is there a website they can go to? Um, You can go to Sharice Inn letter in as in nugget <laughs> and it's on facebook you can look me up there or sharice nicole or sharice normand on facebook and i post on my sharice in page what i'm doing what's what's coming up all the films i've done um if i'm in any shows or anything like that you can find me there and my site is still being made i just don't know how to make a site it's very hard <laughs> i'm working on it it's a very hard thing to make <laughs> Well, that's awesome. Well, I appreciate you Thank hanging out you. and chatting with me. And yeah, talking. definitely. And hopefully, hopefully, uh, you'll get to do another Shelby Stacks, and uh, we get to work together again. Those are always fun. Mm -hmm. What uh, what do you, what do you want to see Shelby Stacks do next? Well, I wanted to do um, Shelby Stacks and Blackula because the dude who played um, the vampire in the last Shelby Stacks was my friend. Oh yeah. But he just moved to New York. Oh, did so he now I don't know what Shelby Stacks I want to do. Or somebody else going to take his part and I'm going to be like, yeah, that's what you get from leaving me <laughs> before we got to do our film together. He's the one that, uh, spoiler alert, but he killed me in that, in, in that show. Oh yeah, yeah, he did. Yeah, we both had to get uh, blasted in the face with fake blood like <laughs> about ten times. Yeah. Yeah, he just moved to New York and left me, so. Aww. Well, good luck to him. Yeah, he, good luck to him. He was a lot of fun to work with. But yeah, that'll be fun. Awesome. Yeah. Well, make sure you check out her pages, and if you want to look and see what all kinds of stuff I'm doing, you can go to richardalester.com and enjoy the podcast and everything else. <laughs>